everyone, and welcome to AEW Dark, a gargantuan episode of AEW Dark. I'm Excalibur. Pay no mind to the fact that we're wearing the exact same clothes as we were on Saturday night. I'm alongside the human suplex machine, Taz, and Olympic bronze medalist, Anthony Agogo. Anthony, listen, listen, I'd like oh. to interrupt Anthony. See, here's the problem. The dry cleaning costs so much these days, yep. as you guys know. It's difficult. So you got to wear the same clothes. Anthony, how are you, my friend? I'm good, mate. I'm good. I'm looking forward to a big night of action here at AEW Dark. Let's not waste another second and throw it down to our colleague, Justin Roberts, standing by inside the ring. This bout is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied to the ring by Hook from East Palo Alto, California, weighing 270 pounds, Power House Hobbs. As I know, you'd like to see Team Taz represented all over AEW yes. programming. You're damn right. We're all about unity with family. We're family through thick and thin, no matter what good times or bad, we stick together. That's how it is. That's why Hook's in the corner right now, Hobbs. Here we go, come on. And his opponent from San Juan, Puerto Rico, weighing 196 pounds, Angel Fashion. Well, last week on Dark, on the Saturday Night Edition, we saw this man was part of a team and he got destroyed by two members of Team Taz, Starks and Cage, and now lot. Look at this. I thought Angel Fashion could be looking for some vengeance. Maybe he still has that in mind, but powerhouse Hobbs. God. Oh, man. not even letting him get out of the gate. I didn't show him that, dude. He just brings those powerful football backgrounds, yeah. brings those powerful body shots. That's that, uh, that's, as you said, that big football background from Hobbs. And just look at this, just, he's got Angel Fashion's hand tied behind his head. He can't protect the body and just land in some big right shovel hooks to the, to the ribs. Well, we're mean. Uh, the crew is mean. Mean people. Cage, stocks. Hobbs, Hook, they're mean guys. That's how, we don't like people. We don't like anyone. Sometimes we don't like each other. Angel Fashion hits the ropes, but his momentum was used against him. You notice this, that's the truth. You know that, dude. You know that, you I, know these guys. I, I know it to be factual. That Team Taz does not like anybody. As powerhouse Hobbs, as Fashion lined up in the corner, what a collision that was. Big man, just powerhouse Hobbs, just squishing fashion. Powerhouse Hobbs has fashion hooked up. This could be it. Town business. Plants them two and three. Winner, powerhouse Hobbs. Too easy. Just too easy for a man like powerhouse Hobbs. Not paid by the minute. And Hook. See, Hook smiles. See, some place said, Hook never smiles. He smiles. He loves when his teammates win, bro. He smiles when his teammates inflict pain on their opponents. And that's what Will Hobbs did here tonight. Beautifully done. It's some town business right here. Town business. <laughs> yeah, I love another win for the crew. My man, Powerhouse Hobbs, with the big win. Uh oh. Hobbs. What the hell's going on? You gotta be careful there. You can't be putting your hands on Hobbs like that. I don't know what's up here. Hobbs I had nothing to do. I thought something bad was gonna happen. Yeah. I did too. I just, I, I can't take, you know, I don't want no problems. You know what I mean? I'm just doing my job as a commentator here. Taz, what an incredible night of action last Sunday night at Revolution. The night kicked off with the AEW World Tag Team Championship on the line. The Young Bucks, Matt and Nick Jackson, retained the championship over Chris Jericho and MJF. Very physical matchup, a lot of emotions after what happened to the Young Bucks' dad at the hands of Jericho and MJF. But at the end of the day, we saw the Young Bucks hit, hit MJF with about 20 different super kicks. Then you know, double super kicks, stereo super kicks, and he was out of it. And the BTE trigger ended the night for Jericho, and the Young Bucks are still the AEW World Tag Team Champions. And Taz, the next match, the Casino Tag Team Royale. 15 teams entered, 30 men but only one team prevailed. It was just so exciting to watch. At the end of the match, Phoenix eliminated Jungle Boy, and now it'll be Pac, the Bastard, and Ray Phoenix to challenge the Young Bucks for the AEW World Tag Team Championship. 
The AEW Women's World Championship was on the line when Hikaru Shida defeated the winner of the Women's World Championship Eliminator Tournament, Ryo Mizunami. Taz, it was an emotional, hard-hitting affair a match that was over 10 years in the making for Sheeta. Absolutely, and Sheeta was able to retain her championship, but you have to tip your cap to Mizunami. She really put herself out there in that ring, battled hard. She could have she could have won this match, but it didn't happen. It could have gone either way, but Hikaru Sheeta was able to exercise the demons to overcome her old rival and retain the AEW Women's World Championship. And you want to talk about a grudge match, Taz. Miro and Kip Sabian defeating Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor in a brutal and bloody affair. Absolutely. For a good chunk of this match, Excalibur, Chuck Taylor was on his own. It was damn near a handicap match with Miro and Kip Sabian picking their spots, you know, with Chuck Taylor because Orange Cassidy was injured backstage earlier. But Cassidy ended up making his way back out towards the ringside area. Yeah, Orange Cassidy returned, delivered a big orange punch to Miro to even the odds. But unfortunately for Chuck Taylor, the power of Miro was just too much to overcome, and he and Kip Sabian were victorious. And then we had the big money match. Matt Hardy and Hangman Adam Page. But unfortunately for Hardy, Taz, Hangman Adam Page is now a little bit richer after winning the match. Yeah, and what a match it was. I mean, this match was really back and forth. The Dark Order seems to have Hangman Page's back to seem to have the Hangman's best interest in mind. And they celebrated with Hangman after he was declared the winner. And then Taz, the face of the Revolution ladder match. Six men competing for a shot at Darby Allen and the TNT Championship, including the debuting all ego Ethan Page. Yeah, it was uh, it was excellent to see Ethan Page involved in this match. And this thing, you talk about taking risks and taking chances. I mean, Cody ended up getting injured in this match. It looked like Cody Rhodes was going to be out of the match completely, but came back out later on. Against doctor's orders, Cody did return to the match, but it did not matter because Scorpio Sky was able to climb the ladder and to grab the brass ring and set a date with Darby Allen on Dynamite. And then in a match I know you have very strong feelings about, Taz, the icon Sting and Darby Allen defeated Brian Cage and Ricky Starks in a street fight unlike anything we've ever seen. Well, absolutely. I mean, listen, I, it, did it end the way I wanted to end? Absolutely not. But I, I you know, I am, I am proud of Starks and Cage and how physical they were, how intense they were. Somehow, some way, Sting and Darby Allen ended up getting the victory. And then in our main event, Kenny Omega retains the AEW World Championship over John Moxley in an exploding barbed wire death match. Tez, this was a career shortening match for both men. Oh, there's no doubt about that, it's Calver. I mean, this is this was gruesome. This was gory. This was bloody. This was, it, it, you know, very physical, very violent. Uh, <laughs> you can go on and on with the adjectives. Just look at what you. Just take a look at what I'm saying here. As you watch the physicality, it was insane. It was terrifying. It was fiery. But it was Kenny Omega who retained the AEW World Championship over John Moxley. <laughs> And let's not forget, Paul White, the newest member of the AEW broadcast team, he had a pretty special scoop and a pretty special signing for all elite wrestling, Taz. Yeah, my old chum, Christian Cage. It's great to see Christian Cage here in AEW. Uh, what a surprise. I didn't know he was going to be here. Obviously, some unfinished business for Christian Cage. The future looks bright for him and for AEW. Tag team action next right here on Dark. SCU is ready to go. This is a tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a combined weight of 379 pounds, the team of Azriel and Danny Limelight. We saw Azriel this past Saturday on AEW Dark. It's not with a very motivated Penta El Cerro Miedo. We saw some big things from Death Triangle at Revolution this past Sunday, but right now, another great tag team making their way to the ring. 
and their opponents from Southern California. At a combined weight of 425 pounds, the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian, SCU. Southern California is very uh, big. Surprise that Kaz and uh, Daniels. Let me give us some details. We're talking San Diego, we're talking LA, we're talking to Anaheim, we're talking Long Beach. I mean, I've drawn money in all these cities. What about Paul Springs there? Paul Springs, I don't ever wrestled there, but I probably bought a car there. <laughs> so a house. I can't remember. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, Frank Kazarian from Palm Springs. Christopher Daniels from Wait, hold on a Los second. Angeles. Wait, wait a second. Don't just say that so quick. Because CD's from Palm Springs? No, Kaz is from Palm Springs. Oh, all right. Uh, I mean, that's why Justin keeps it concise. Now, wait, hold on. Where, where's CD from? Uh, Los Angeles proper. Oh, I do. That's why I get so upset with these Palm Springs. I was all thrown off. <laughs> Southern California geography here with Excalibur and Taz. Thank you for joining us right. on Dark. And Taz, I don't know if you noticed, but when uh, CD and Kaz came out the, on the lower third on the screen, said that they were the number two ranked tag team here. They have been undefeated as a tag team yeah. since they imposed that, uh, that you know, stress that, on themselves. Yeah. Right? That pressure that Kazarian put on the team on him and Daniels. If they lose, they break up. Yeah, and and they've been on a roll. And it's been a, a, a tremendous motivator. No doubt. It's, it really is. And as long as they can keep it going, you know, that's great. Kazarian is escaping out into the top wrist lock here on Danny Limelight. It's a well done top wrist like Limelight's trying to push off of it. And well, now he's bridging out of it. Trying to bridge out of it. Yeah, Kazarian trying to force that wrist to the ground. Limelight, oh, brings him up. And takes him down with an arm drag. And Taz, we've talked time and time again about how fundamentally sound Frankie Kazarian is. Yeah, always. I mean, it's just that's just the way he is. That's just all the years. Oh, roll up here. All the years of, of training and wrestling worldwide against great wrestlers. And, you know, the better guys you wrestle, the better you get over time. And both these men, you know, Kaz and CD, have had great opponents throughout their careers as a tag team and as individuals. So hence why they're both so crisp. Limelight rolls Kazarian through into the ropes. Great reversal there by Frankie Kazarian. Kazarian back roll. Oh, sends Limelight over the top. That monkey flip uh, really just ended up Limelight on his rear end. And he floats in that front headlock. He had great swing to that front chancery. You got to look there. He had the S grip underneath the, uh, just actually just outside of the, uh, the Adam's apple of Danny Limelight. Limelight, it wasn't a full double leg. He tried to double. Oh, and he grabbed the referee, did line like, oh, oh. Posey, he had something in his eye, and then Mike Posey had his back turned, and then, well, yeah, they Azrael, were able to cheat. Yeah, Azrael laid in a shot, and Limelight, and Azrael turning things around here on Frankie Kazarian. Ooh! Wow. Not that spider off his chest. Big ripping chop, a second one there. Frankie Kazarian, Irish whip. Into the corner, reversed by Limelight, but Kazarian a step ahead. German suplex here, two, no. And Taz, break down the technique right there. Kazarian hit the German suplex, but you could see he was uh, he was going off his heels. Yeah, which is, sometimes if you over-rotate the guy, you can do that, and it does. that's why he didn't get the pin, because you could, you know, not ripping on Frankie, but it's just the technique. If you over-rotate a guy in a suplex, you can, you don't end up in a good bridge. Yeah, sometimes, oh, cover here. Uh, you, you don't realize back. your own strength. No, it, exactly. So, but you know, some guys will do a German suplex that Kazarian did to get a lot of impact on it, and even if they don't get the win on it. Vertical suplex it, floats into a cover to Daniels only a two count. You know, you could wear down your opponent like Limelight's hurting right now, tagging your partner and Chris Daniels, and then you get the better the better end of the guy, and that's what's happening. And very well could have been that Kazarian was thinking release German suplex. Could be. Could be. And uh, instead, at the, the last possible moment, Went into a pinning predicament. He just just felt it in the moment. But either way, Limelight was punished by it. But Azrael made a quick tag in. Limelight did something. It's a big pet peeve of mine. You know, oh! Tag team match. Just left the guy in the middle of the ring when he goes to make a tag to his partner. But it, it didn't hurt Limelight and Azrael. It didn't. But I'm just not a fan of that. Azrael heads into the ropes. Tilt world backbreaker here. Hooks both legs. Does Daniels just a two count? And Taz, I, you know, it didn't hurt them in the immediate moment. But it remains to be seen if it'll hurt them in the long run, especially against such a veteran tag team like SCU. Can't make mistakes like that. You just can't, you know, against guys like SCU, to your point. Yeah, you got to make the most of every single opportunity you have here on AEW Dark. 
Well, that's smart right now. He's just wearing out Daniels, his limelight. And of course, starting next week, we'll have another AEW show to look forward to, AEW Dark Elevation, hosted by Tony Schiavone and Paul White. Yeah, that's gonna be great. Oh! Yes, yeah, so a lot of action here coming for you next week as Danny Limelight covers. Just a two count. You got, you know, Shivani and Paul White on Mondays doing AEW Elevation. Then you have us here doing plain old AEW Dog kicking ass and taking names. I would say a OG. OG, bro. OG Dog. Well, that should be the new name. Of it. OG Dog. OG Dog, bro. Like that, that's 20 years old. That means that means Uncle Dark in Japanese. Yes. <laughs> it goes live like live oh. goes over the top with the senton. Springs off the back of Azrael with the frog splash cover here. No. Doing the Victor Cruz. I cracked myself up the OG Dark. You popped yourself? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were funny. Uncle Dark. Uncle Dark. Old school. <laughs> You're funny as hell. Hey, thanks, Saz. Appreciate it. <laughs> we have fun here. In oh, Park. yeah. Oh! QT Marshall better ready that season to assist. No! Yeah. While he's doing that, he can tell this guy not to wear black and orange again. But I digress. Azriel putting the pressure on Christopher Daniels. Daniels up to his feet. Short elbows to the midsection of Azriel. Club across the spine. Azrael sends Daniels in, swinging a miss there. Daniels able to avoid contact. O'Connor roll. Daniels gets sent wow. forward, but used to his, yeah. his advantage as he tagged out the Kazarian. That's again, veteran move. You get oh. off and make the tag, and then comes uh, Kazarian, who's red hot right now. Big contact on that leg lariat, swinging a miss by Kaz, but didn't miss. With the flying forearm. Ooh, Solbat there, knee to the face and clubbing. Larry turns Danny Limelight inside out. That was some shot. Frankie Kazarian among the more heavy handed competitors here in AEW. Pound for pound, one of the hardest punchers we have. And oh, Azrael found that out firsthand. Damn near knocked his head off with that clothesline. Limelight, oh, man, the leg drop. Across the back of Limelight's head, you saw that, that thousand mile stare. As Azrael getting brought up to his feet. Azrael is getting singled out right now by SCU. Sent right into that waiting back elbow. And Daniels coming down with the stomp. Covers here to, no, Limelight kicks oh, wow. out. Man, put, put a lot of force into that one. Sure did. Limelight and Kazarian straight the strikes right here. Limelight, that spinning back fist. Ooh, big high boot there by Christopher Daniels. A low high action. They have eliminated Danny Limelight totally. Boot to the face. And oh man, the celebrity rehab. Covered one. Watch that arm. Two, Watch that arm, Ralph. Three. Oh. No the winners of this match. Yes. See you. Well, he was close to the ropes, but he yeah. did not break the plane. Mike Posey was on the spot. Yeah, you know, I mean, sometimes it happens, right? You know, we don't, you know, we have things to replay, but matches aren't determined by it. I don't want to get him stuck in the uh, proverbial quicksand on this, but I got to tell you, I don't know, it's pretty close to that arm, man. That arm was close to under there. You don't think it broke the plane, though, it's Cal. I do not believe it did. I think it kind of did, dude. Let's see if we oh. see the pin cover here. The arm is pulled in. Oh, uh, man, that's, oh, you're right. You are correct. Well, that's why you won the friggin' award. That's a first oh. time for everything. Broken oh. box right twice a day. A blind squirrel finds a nut, and SCU finds another victory here tonight. And while we have a second, that's hit by Captain of Production Truck for that great overhead shot that I suggested in my talk back. <laughs> Ryan Nemeth, Pretty Peter Avalon, and Cesar Bononi team up in six-man tag team action next here tonight on Dark.
This is a six-man tag team match set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring, the team of Aaron Solo, Brick Aldridge, and Dean Alexander. So hold on a second. What's the story with the Nightmare Family? Are we just giving out jackets for the Nightmare Family? I was going to say, that how, how embarrassing that they all shop at the same place. I mean, what's the deal? Anthony, can you, like, spot me up to this? No, I haven't even got one. Taz, I haven't even got one. So I'm, I'm a bit pissed off. I mean, <laughs> who's dishing these uh, jackets out? What's would, going on? I would think it's the American Nightmare's assistant. That's who's doing it. Cody Rhodes' assistant's giving these things out. Well, they're selling them on shopping. No, one of the other And their opponents, at a total combined weight of 649 pounds, the team of Cesar Benoni, the Hollywood hunk, Ryan Nemeth, Keeping us waiting. And drum roll. Hold on. Here we go. <laughs> and and pretty Peter Avalon. Look at that face of Avalon. Nem Nemeth is, uh, is wiping down Cesar. That's a lot of work. I mean, there's a lot of uh, just sex appeal in Peter. You're yeah. pulling a ton of sex appeal. Well, Peter really, really indulged at catering at Revolution this past Sunday night, and so Cesar had his work cut out for him. No, it's not from body fat, it's from body love. He's a loving man, is Avalon. He's got a lot of loving involved in his body. I don't so know that everything. he's really had time to digest all the food, so it hasn't transitioned. He did eat a lot, I did see that. Yeah. Look at that image. Uh, a triumvirate of hunky men. <laughs> And that British accent just makes it, Anthony, I gotta tell you. I think our female <laughs> demographics are up about 25% in the last two minutes. Maybe 23%, but I get it. <laughs> so Aaron Solo start things off for his team. Teaming up with Brick Aldridge and Dean Alexander. Two guys I know very well, Excalibur, very, very well, all three of them. Then where'd they get the jackets? Well, I don't know, I've got, <laughs> yeah, I'm annoyed. I'm actually I, annoyed. I don't blame you. Collar and elbow tie up here by Ryan Nemeth and Aaron Solo meeting in the center of the ring. Oh, look, the fireman's carry right there. Nemeth's got a serious tan going on. He's a California guy. He's that, that, is, sun. that is an inhuman tan. <laughs> oh, 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 nice. Arm right whipping your opponent down. Solo landing on his shoulder. It's like he's rubbed uh, tomorrow's ketchup on his chest, isn't it? Yeah. Nemeth. Nemeth. Getting caught with some arm drags here. As he took his eye off the prize. The prize was Solo. But Solo maintaining control of Nemeth, bringing him over the corner. This is Brick Aldridge, he's a big boy. I'm telling you, he's the strongest man I've ever seen in my entire life. Hold on. Stronger than Nick Colorado. Wait, oh, listen, listen. Hold on. I'm hey, telling Anthony. you, I'm telling you. Oh. In your entire did you, in, life? Did you just, he what benches, is he, he, CD? he benches 550 <laughs> pounds for reps. Does he really? For 100% he squats. He squats 650. Hold on a second. He's a big, big boy. 550 for reps. 550 for reps. I think Brian Cage and Nick Camarado has something to say about that. Seriously. Like they trained the, I saw it. This is a hand on my heart. Five gospel fifty truth. for reps. Don't I saw questions. him shoulder pressing Nick Camarato last week in training. He shoulder pressed Nick? Oh, <laughs> okay. Good God. With ease, ease. All day, all that, day, baby. That's, that's impressive for a Brian Nemeth, human. yeah, escapes out. Drop kick there to Aldridge. And makes the quick tag out to Pretty Peter. Pretty Peter diving oh, no, body press. Oh, good. Big brick. Oh, my God. Rick Aldridge, fall away, <laughs> slam. Wow, agility. Big, we, powerful guy, yeah. We locked up in training recently. I thought he was gonna pull my shoulders out of their sockets yeah. on the lock up. Jump Big strength up. boy. But um, uh, so, so QT Marshall trained this gentleman also. Yeah, he trained us all. He trains everybody. QT, basically everybody in pro wrestling, QT trains. Dean Alexander, let me tell you about Dean Alexander. Yeah. He worked on the railway for 10 years, had a very, very good job on the railway. He gave it all up to come to, uh, to North Cross, Georgia. Look at the far leg there. You know, you know who else did that? And train of us. You know who else did what you just said? Gone. Me. I so, worked for a railroad for a Long Island years. Railroad. That's right. L-A-R-R. -R. I left a job to... To pursue, yeah. to pursue a dream. Yes, sir. And, it and that out. dream was to become a professional chef. <laughs> Unfortunately, it didn't work out for time. <laughs> so he <laughs> fell back on pro that wrestling. That is awesome. <laughs> 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 that was funny. Uh, Dean Alexander getting stomped by Big Cesar so Benoni. I got to talk to Dean about, talk some shop, some railroad chatter. That sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> big, big body shot from Benoni. Yeah. Uh. Tag out to Ryan Nemeth. 
Nemeth is the legal man with Alexander. Ooh. Wow, look at that. He's powerful. So says off Benone. Ooh. Into the drop ah, kick Nemeth. from the Hollywood Honk. Hooks the far leg. Oh, I'd like to have seen um, Nemeth get high up on the chest in that pin then, Taz. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to, to try to stack the guy's body weight, your opponent's body weight up on his uh, shoulders and neck. Didn't do that. His COVID bracelet went flying, but I digress. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, no, you're right. He should have stacked him a little bit higher with, with, with that. But um, good hammerlock here. And hooks to head, and that's smart. In a tag match, don't just leave your opponent alone. You know, I've, hook him and then tag out. I've been really impressed with Nemeth in the last last month or so in AEW. Very good. Yes, yes. He's very good. Chopped to the chest there by pretty Peter Avalon. Punishing Dean Alexander. Oh, oh I thought oh. I spoke too soon. That was a punishing chop. Says off Bononi. Oh, my gosh. Big right hand to the midsection. That's a, I mean, I've been chopped by some big cats, man. It, it, I can't explain it. It really gets numbness to your legs. It, it's no BS, man. It really oh. rocks you when you get hit hard like that. That was a that was a nasty chop by a large athlete. But sometimes it has the adverse effect has because I've been chopped numerous times and it pisses me off and it adds to my intensity. Mm. I understand that, but I don't know what size guys you, in your early wrestling True. career has chopped you. Yeah, nobody as I, big as Benoni. Yeah, I've had guys like you know 330 pounds chop me. Mm. A guy named. Bam Bam Bigelow, God rest his soul. And it'll not what about, be a damn what about hell. last week on Dynamite? Shaquille O'Neal delivering oh, that was, yes, the, the yes. chops of the year to the chest of Cody Rhodes. And Cody, to his credit, he, he, he took it and you know and came right back with it. But yeah, they were nasty chops. Swing and a miss there by Cesar Bononi. Nobody home. Aaron Solo lifting uppercut in the corner. Nemeth and Bononi stacked up. Smart by Solo using his quickness and his experience. Oh, nice. Very well done. Solo got the tag and he's making the most of it here. Ooh, the high kick. And now Solo ascending to the top. Cesar Bononi avoids contact. Oh! Nemeth got taken down. Back of his head hit that mat hard too, Nemeth. But only so big, he blocked the vision of Nemeth right, then in that, exactly in that form. Happened. I agree with you. You're exactly right, Anthony. And Solo headed up to the top. Oh, there's wow. the strength of Benoni on display. Oh, my God. Great transition from the catch into the suplex. Benoni might be busted up a little there from that, uh, that kick from Solo. Where's he? Or maybe his eye, yeah, his I nose. For a second, oh, yeah. look like his, over his eye. He's got very thick eyebrows, like thick, like a mustache. <laughs> Avalon and Nemeth. Apoplectic about what happened to Big Cesar. His nose, I think, is bleeding. I think oh, you're right, Cesar. Thank you. It's not his eyebrows. <laughs> this, uh, this, Brian Nemeth. Everywhere. This is interesting. Uh oh. So oh a that? bit of a rude awakening there for Dean Alexander. Hooks the far leg, does Nemeth, and he gets the victory! A winner for this match, the team of Pretty Peter Avalon, Cesar Bononi, and the Hollywood Hawk, Brian Nemeth. Well, an impressive victory for these three men. Cesar might have himself a broken nose right there, Anthony. You've seen this and dealt with broken noses a lot in your boxing career. And his mm -hmm. nose looks a little swelled up. I think it might be broken, dude. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Take a look at that. A little swell, yeah, right? He's, he's, he's got quite a big beak as well, hasn't he? So ha! I don't you know if he's uh, hey, you broken or just big. You fill his nose with nipples, you'll be a millionaire. <laughs> This is the story of Matt and Nick Jackson, seen through their eyes. Over the past 20 years, they have documented their tireless journey, their triumphs, and their tribulations. And now, they are ready to share their adventures with the world in their new book. One day, let's grow up and let's be professional wrestlers. This is the story of two brothers that became two loving fathers that went on to become the best tag team in professional wrestling today. This is the story of the Young Bucks killing the business. Young Bucks, we're killing the business. A huge singles collision between Big Shoddy Lee Johnson and Baron Black is up next here tonight on AEW Dark.
This contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing 180 pounds, Big Shotty Lee Johnson. Lee Johnson has, uh, has really turned a corner here in AEW since picking up that first victory in the tag team match with Cody Rhodes, the American Nightmare. And can he keep the momentum going here tonight? And his opponent weighing 210 pounds, Baron Black. Against a man he and Anthony know very well, Baron Black. And uh, Anthony, can, can we get your prediction? I was gonna say before the bell, but just after the bell, who do you got in this one? It's gonna be a real, a real close one. I think it's a, as close to a 50-50 as you can get. It's gonna be a real pick 'em. I'm gonna lean towards Lee Johnson though because he's got, he, you know, he's on a roll. You know, big things popping for Big Shotty. Taz, who you got? Well, you know, I don't care who wins. Okay. But I, I'm gonna, great. Great to hear oh. out of one of the broadcasters. <laughs> no, but I'm gonna lean towards towards uh, Lee Johnson for sure. I, I agree with Anthony. He definitely has momentum. But Baron Black is no one to, to sleep on. You know, he, he's a talented grappler for sure, a talented pro wrestler, and we've seen a lot of Baron Black. He can go. So it's gonna be an excellent match. Well, I wish there was a nine-year-old out here for me to gamble with because I would take the underdog, Baron Black. You are, yes, you you have not been doing well in your gambling of pro wrestling here in AW. That I can tell you. Lee's given away about eight years' experience to, to Baron Black. He's given away 30 pounds in weight, so, you know, he's up against it. Was that about two stone? That's exactly, yeah, 50, yeah, 14 pounds in a stone, yeah, almost two, just over two stone. Are you impressed by that, Taz? No. Cultured man. So, look at his, he's, he's not Go cultured to hell, Taz. All. He's not cultured. He's a, he's a drunk, um, but... <laughs> Roll up here by Baron Black. <laughs> oh! Gotcha. And uh, oh. speaking of gambling, AEW Casino now available on the App Store and Google Play. Free to play, download it now. AEW Casino, and Lee oh. Johnson charges in. Am I in that game? All right. So, uh, <laughs> Brian Black is head first driven by Lee Johnson. See, looks, I look at it like this. I understand, like what Anthony, you're saying about the experience. Definitely, Baron Black has a lot of experience over Lee Johnson. And Lee Johnson is one of the younger competitors we have here in AEW. But I will give credit oh. to <laughs> Cody Rose for recruiting Lee and getting Lee into the Nightmare family. Lee Johnson, you know, sometimes when a guy is younger, it's tough to scout him because there's less, less tape on him. And I think a guy like Lee Johnson capitalizes on veterans not knowing much about him. Especially because, you know, the, the training sessions in the Nightmare Factory, not, you know, it's not like anybody's taping those. So you only have to go on your, your first-hand experience. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh! Brutal landing there for Lee Johnson. Baron Black able to anticipate it. And a lot of first-hand experience shown by Baron Black there. He knew Johnson was going to elevate over the top rope, and he made him pay for it. That mat, that mat in, in quotation marks is... It's half an inch at most, and you can see the concrete underneath that. Wow. That mat is really hard. Well, Lee, uh, Baron Black, and you're right, it is. It's, it, there's cement underneath that, that little wrestling mat. It's an amateur wrestling mat or a judo mat, but the thing is, he landed hard on his back, Baron. I, I, I'm just being honest, critiquing the suplex. He didn't have a ton of an arch in that suplex. So when you do that, you land spine first on that hard floor where it's cold out right now. That's cold out, and those mats yeah. actually compress. They Correct. get even harder. Correct. As Baron Black charging in, Ooh. discus clothesline. Went for, the, went for that suplex again, Lee Johnson countered. Just a two count there for Johnson. Oh, the boot to the midsection. Swing and a miss by Baron Black. Oh, atomic drop, backstabber combination. Great velocity on that, deep cover. Johnson able to kick out. And he kicked out with authority. See him sit up after that kick out. He wants to win. Yeah, you want to stay off your back. You know, I I tried in my days when I'd kick out, I'd turn to my stomach right away. Mm -hmm. Same thing Lee did. He sat up instead of turning to your stomach. You want to get off your back. So that's good coaching and that's good training for an athlete like Lee Johnson. And also get into the psyche of your opponent. It's like in, in the boxing in the boxing world, standing up in between the rounds. Like your opponent looks at you and thinks, oh my God, he's not tired because right. he's standing not up. sitting on a bench, on, on the, the, the stool. Big chops there from Lee Johnson, sending Black into the corner. No, Baron reverses. And 
Sit now, oh, steps out with the backbreaker. Covers here. Just a two count. Well, Baron decides to put his form across the face of Lee. I mean, that, that's a good cover. If you hook a leg, you might have a better shot, but I like I liked the, what Black did by maybe running his forearm now. Well, maybe a little late in the match for that, though. Could be, yeah. Definitely could be. Is Baron trying to power bomb or something here, maybe? Hoist up, Lee Johnson. Lee Johnson escapes into the waist lock. Baron using those that, that technical prowess to capture the wrist and turn it into a chop. Stopping Lee Johnson in his tracks momentarily. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, you're not going to wow. really find a much better drop kick than that, folks. That was almost, <laughs> almost picture perfect. Can I, we get another so look at that? It was right on the money. And he, and, and he jumped forward as well to get extra momentum with the, with, with the kick. Yeah, check this out. Watch Tremendous this drop kick. Tremendous extension. He exploded off the face of Baron Black with that drop kick. It's that it all comes from the core of your body. You know, when you drop kick like that and you stick a spring and you spring away, that gives that jackknife bump that you give to your opponent. Back elbow there, stops Baron in his tracks. Baron though will not be denied. Charges in, eats the boot of Lee Johnson. Johnson avoids contact, leaps over the top. Clothesline, a second one. Looking for the third. Oh no, instead avoids the contact, hits a back elbow, hanging neck breaker. Lee Johnson, big shot, he fired up. Paying homage to Sting with those who beats in his chest like that. Oh, oh. landed on his feet and the thrust kick to the jaw. Baron Black might be out. Death Valley driver, he rolled over, hooks the arms and no. That was close right there. Yeah, didn't have the legs hooked. And that could be that um, a momentary lapse by Lee Johnson. I think, yeah, Johnson disappointed with himself there. Even J.D. Drake in the background thought that one was over. It was super close for sure. Lee Johnson with an opportunity here. He's, he's slow to capitalize though, man. Yeah, he's, he's definitely taking some time. I think he's thinking. Uh, a little too long. And Baron Black takes advantage. That shot to the kidneys. Ooh, swing and a miss. Johnson through the thrust kick again. Dragon Ooh. screw. And he's going for Cloverleaf here, it looks like. Yeah, steps over. Texas Cloverleaf. He doesn't have Johnson's heel in the in the uh, crook in the of his elbow, of his though. Elbow. Yeah, and that's the little thing like the great Dean Malenko would do when he did that cloverleaf to your point. See that the foot, the heel of Johnson coming out to your point, Excalibur. Oh, inside cradle though here. Two, no. Malenko, I've been in a cloverleaf by Malenko and you just, you're not getting out. Your legs are just locked in. Lee Johnson sits down. Two, no. Baron Black reverses. Both men exchanging oh. pins here. One, two, no. <sighs> Johnson up to his feet. Baron Black, oh, ran right into that elbow strike. Pump kick there. Blocked, he blocked it. Oh, but he didn't he block didn't the insecurity. Yeah, right upside the head right there. Baron Black caught of a black. Oh, oh just snap a German suplex there. The released German. You can see Lee Johnson very unsteady. Frank Gasno checked on him. Johnson explodes under blue thunder bomb. That's One, two, it. three. The winner of this match, Big Shotty Lee Johnson. Well, a great back and forth battle. Lee Johnson not coming out of this one unscathed. But that is the name of the game. And Lee Johnson get his, gets his hand raised and picks up the victory. A hard fought victory over Baron Black here tonight. A very good match. Anthony, you said at the top that it would be um, a 50 50 type match, and it kind of was to your point. A really good match. Big Shotty looking great here tonight on AEW Dark. Look at this massive match coming up next. The Dark Order in full effect. Cole Cabana, Evil Uno, Stu Grayson, and Alex Reynolds. Get ready, we're rocking. Join the Dark Order. Okay. This is a eight-man tag team match set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring 
Colt Cabana, Eva Luno, Stu Grayson, and Alex Reynolds. The Dark Order with a big show of force here tonight on AEW Dark as Negative One, their leader. Of course, looking on and bringing the boys to the ring. There's Cole Cabana right there, and you got Evil Uno, Stu Grayson, one of my good friends, by the way. And their opponents, the team of Aaron Fry, D3, John Cruz, and Bade Morales. Taz. Yes. I, I hate to, to do this to you. Then don't. Well, I guess I don't hate to do this. Well, just tell me. Earlier in the broadcast, yes. Powerhouse Hobbs, uh, you said that you, know, you don't have friends because you guys hate people. Yeah, well, Stu Grayson's like me. He hates people too. If anybody could fit in Team Taz from the Dark Water, it is Stu Grayson. Not that I'm recruiting, I'm not poaching. I'm just, I know where you're going because you're, uh, you, you're in, uh, you know, you stir trouble up. Hey man, cro cross negative one at your own apparel. He's that is not friend. one enemy. He, yeah, but if you, if you poach Stu Grayson. I would never poach. Yeah, because you're afraid of negative one. Oh, who is it? Look at here, roll up here by Reynolds. There he is, negative one. I, of course I'm afraid of him. Everybody's afraid of uh, negative one. D3 sending Reynolds into the rope, swing and a miss. Reynolds comes back. Nice job by Alex Reynolds with that, that uh, oh, flying elbow. Yeah, he left his feet with the back elbow. The drop kick takes down D3. Nice drop kick. Springs to his feet. Reynolds making it look easy. Aaron Fry tags in. Fry for his quartet. Thickly built athlete. And now my former best friend. I mean, I don't know. I'd still be your best friend. I'm just you saying. You said I can't be friends with Steve No, Grayson. I'm saying you said you didn't have friends. That was the other segment. I changed. Oh, I see. That's right, give it. People, aren't people allowed to change and grow? Come on, that's, that's TV. It's wrestling. Grayson hoists up Fry, drives him to that corner. Tag out to Evil Uno. Evil Uno and Stu Grayson. Two guys that Uno and Grayson probably have the best chemistry, arguably, in anybody in tag team wrestling, maybe next to the, the Young Bucks, I would say. No, no disrespect to other teams. And I think well, their chemistry is underrated. You know, and we, we've talked a lot about the Dark Order as an organization that how we, we've seen a lot of different teams within Dark Order, and they, they're able to function at, at a very high level, but to your point, Taz, None higher than, than Stu Grace and Evil Uno. Correct. Let me help you out. The word is configuration, not different teams within the organization of Dark Order. It's different configurations, but I, I digress. Thanks. So let's see. You're welcome. Thanks for bearing me. <laughs> Appreciate it. I, it was a very genuine thank you. So Coca-Ban is up to something sketchy, shocking. He's never seen a shenanigan he didn't like. Oh, that guy. Typical Chicago win. With the shenanigans. Fry sent into the ropes, swinging a miss there by Uno. Drop kick by Aaron Fry, takes Uno off his feet. Job by Fry. Aaron Fry. Don't wait here, buddy. Get moving. Coming off the middle rope, diving elbow drop. Went, uh, I think he was going for thinking cover, but Uno was already up and moving towards the corner. So great heads up move there by Fry, identifying the potential issue there. Well, it's tough for Fry, D3, Morales, and for John Cruz because they, they've never teamed as a quartet before. You're dealing with the, the Dark Order. There's, there's, there's less chemistry for your team when you're dealing with a, a unit like the Dark Order. Taz, I don't know if you saw, they were outside of a barber shop and singing. They were? Today. Yeah. I didn't know that, the quartet? Yeah. Oh, he's seen that. Those type of Italian barber songs. Morales just got punched in the face. <laughs> Literally just got punched right in his face. <laughs> there's, a, there's an Excalibur snorkel. There's like a drinking game on that. Do you know that? There is. I did not. On Kicks dark. The yeah, there is. People talk about it on the, on the comments. Uh-oh. Oh, Taz never read the comments and <laughs> never get DDT oh. cover here. No. My assistant reads the comments. Oh, he gives me cliff notes. And gives you an Italian snorkel while you're at it. <laughs> Italian snorkel. <laughs> Not Italian. It got uh, another one. Yeah. <laughs> D3, speaking of Italians, here we go. <laughs> Perfect segue. Irish whip, double Irish whip reversed. A meeting of the minds there for Italian Fry whip. and Wait D3. Italian whip. No! Oh! You're done. <laughs> no, we got six more matches. <laughs> Oh, oh. Evil Uno puts on the brakes. Oh, the stunner! Wow, and what a stunner it was! Good gosh. 
And the tag is made. Colt Cabana. Catches Cruz and whoa, drove him in. That was smart. To Good Morales. Job. Good job by Colt Cabana. Oh, watch out. The crucifix rolls Cabana through, but the elbow strike right on target. Good job by the ham, Colt Cabana. I mean that positively. Charging in the corner, the flying apple. That's QT's gimmick. <laughs> no, it's the big apple. Oh. And May Saruga's the big apple. Yep, I know that. She was tweeting me. Another story. It was funny. But man, John Cruz is in grave danger, my friend. Evil Uno has Vary Morales all hooked up. Oh my God. Flatlines him. And John Cruz just sitting on the shoulders of Colt Cabana. And now Cabana puts on the brakes once again. Reynolds. Oh God, watch out. Watch out here. Oh, this oh. tombstone Aaron Fry onto the chest of Vary Morales. Tore up his yam bag. And Cabana. Oh, what up again? Cabana's still up there. And D3 is up on the shoulders, but that nightfall by Stu Grayson. Cabana, now the path is finally clear. He's looking around, making sure nobody else is left. Chicago skyline. Well, it was worth the wait because that was a great skyline by the Chicago's own Colt Cabana. And Cabana makes the cover. Two, three. The winners of this match, Dirk Order. Great job right there by the dark order. Colt Cabana, so proud of himself, it was excellent. And negative one. I mean, oh, oh, oh back it off Mike had, Posey. Negative one, he's got a major heat with Mike Posey. That's well documented behind the scenes. I mean, if if you had a choice between having negative one, oh. Yeah, buddy. Negative one and Arne Anderson in your corner. That would be a tough choice, man. Uh, I'd probably go negative one and moves quicker. I saw that kip up. And what a Chicago skyline that was. Cabana couldn't even believe it. Cruz rolling awesome. out of the ring. Tremendous victory here tonight for Dark Order, led by that man. Negative one. Kip up Jones himself. The Varsity Blondes, Grip Garrison and Brian Pillman Jr. are in action next here on AEW Dark. This is a tag team contest set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a combined weight of 453 pounds, Chris Garrison, Brian Hillman Jr., the Varsity Law. Tess, you, know, you know why these guys are such a great team? No. It's because Brian Billman cut the bottom off of his shirt and then he gave it to Griff Garrison to sew on. So that's why Garrison's shirt is so extra long. Well, I can't top that. Okay. And their opponents had a combined weight of 396 pounds, a team of Ryzen and Cameron Stewart. You will see uh, Cameron Stewart's brother, Basil Stewart. He's a tremendous uh, flute player. And, and uh, not to be confused cello. with their, their uncle, uh, Payne Stewart. Payne Stewart, right, right. Right, right. I, I play golf. I live, you know, I go to Beth Page Black on a regular basis. You know what that is? Well, do you hit off the black tees? Yes, of course. I Long Drive Jones blocks. over here. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I'm five handicap. Are right, you really? I'm stuck, dude. Please. I don't like to brag on the air. Wow. I want to hear more about your golf game. Here, you and Telly Blanchard have these conversations. Tess, what about Telly Blanchard last week? Returning to action. Done, bro. Telly Blanchard looked great, man. Are you kidding me? For the first time for in about 32 years on national television, Telly Blanchard. It was awesome. FTR teamed up and got the victory over Jurassic Express. Super impressive. Shoulder FTR tackle. looked great in that, and so did Telly, obviously. And Oh, what a little chop right there by in the back by Pillman. Yeah, cheap shot there by Brian Pillman Jr. Cameron Stewart rolls back, sweeps the leg out of Pillman. Not even a one count. Oh, God, oh. he cleaned his clock with that sure one. Did. Oh, Cameron almost got his hip broken with that stomp. Now cover here, lateral press. Just a one count there. Pillman slowing the pace down. Ooh. Wow, ripping chop there. Cover here, one, two. Cameron Stewart from uh, Prince Edward Island. Province in Canada. Yeah, it's a long trip from here. It so sure is. Oh! 
Don't dare to Canada from Jacksonville. It's a hole, my friend. Oh, it's but he gets directs though. Oddly, nobody else can except for him. Oh, really? Yeah. That's really odd. Boots to the midsection. Pillman coming off, and swinging neck breaker. Oh, watch out! Watch out! Garrison drops the leg, drops the hammer. Pillman covers here. Nope. Cameron Stewart able to kick out. Smart by Pillman to grab his opponent by the head, get a front headlock on Cameron Stewart. Makes the tag before he's about to do something. It's going to be a vertical suplex or something. We'll see. Oh, but Ryzen. Ryzen actually had the referee distracted. Garrison said he made the tag legally. And that's a great heads up move there by Ryzen. It was a great heads up. A little sloppy work there by Vosley uh, Blonde, by the way. Did they spell the trunks right yet? Or oh, that's their thing. They don't use the E. Remember I ripped them on dynamite? Oh, no, I do remember that. Uh, you know what? Uh, yeah. Exactly. I, I'm, I'm, you know what? Yes. I, I was, I was going to say, I'm trying to get a look at Pillman's butt, <laughs> but then I thought about what I was about to say. Don't look at the comments, Excalibur. But and I, they did fix it. There it is. They did. I think they did. Yeah. yeah. I noticed uh, because I, I looked at my sheet. Well, they're welcome. Oh. God, rough landing there for Pillman Jr. here. Cover. Sure they fixed it. Yes, they did. <laughs> oh! Oh! Another chop to the chest for right. Oh, boom. Oh, oh man. Met the that middle turnbuckle pad that face was, first. That was a hard shot, man. And rising. Kick, oh, going up top. Rising, yeah, he told the world he's going up top. Hell's Gate, Florida. Here we go. Ryzen! Right there, adjacent to Kissimmee. Oh! He was way off mark, too. With those knees and actually ankles, you can see Pillman holding on to his, uh, his lower leg. Instep. It's called an instep, sir. Griff Garrison taking down both of his opponents. Garrison blocks the clothesline. Oh, oh high boot caught Ryzen underneath the jaw. Swing and a miss there by Stewart. Elevated high and dropped down. Oh, that was a high backdrop. Almost as high as the one that Shaq gave Cody. Oh, my God. Remember that backdrop from on Dynamite? Last week on Dynamite, Holy it was cow. extremely impressive. But Cameron Stewart escapes out. Yeah. Waist lock. Garrison backs him off. Oh! Oh, he's knocked out. <laughs> Basil Stewart's knocked out. <laughs> knocked him out. Burks knocked him out. Here are your winners. The Versailles Blocks. No need for double team maneuvers. Yeah, man, that was a... That was a rough shot, man. <laughs> yeah, that was a shot, didn't it? <laughs> Cameron it stepped on the way out. Got his clock clean there by Griff Garrison. Yeah, let's take a look at this replay of this forearm shiver right here. Oh, yeah, started started with the backdrop and boom! Wow. Pow! Oh, oh man. man, he accelerated into that. Man, that Cameron Stewart got his George Jack. And there are your winners: Griff Garrison, Brian Pillman Jr., the Varsity Blondes. Ladies, action coming up right now on Dog Diamante gonna do her thing. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from the 305, Diamante. Diamante in singles action here tonight on AEW Dark. And what about that AEW Women's Eliminator Tournament? Really a, a, a tremendous tournament that saw Ryo Mizunami yeah. advance to face Hikaru Shida at Revolution. Well, you and I have had the opportunity to call and her up. opponent from Charleston, South Carolina, Savannah Thorne. The bulk of that tournament together, and we, we pulled a couple of uh, Mizunami's matches, so I was very happy to see that she was victorious, but it was a hell of a contest on Dynamite for sure, and it could have went either way. And Diamante and Savannah Thorne. Oh, Diamante just escapes underneath. Avoids the contact. And, oh, look at this. Thorne escapes underneath. 
Thorne so, very uh, cocky, very confident. Yeah. You gotta be careful with Diamante. Don't get too confident. No, Diamante making Savannah Thorne pay. Savannah though, using her strength advantage. Sending Diamante in the corner, rolls through, keeps their momentum. And the knee drop one. Ooh. Man, I, I think Taz, that would have been a huge upset. Yeah, I think she caught Diamante pretty good across the jaw with that. You're right. The f one of, I think it was the right boot, the front of the boot, really was laying across the jaw of Diamante. Diamante is tough as hell, as you know. German suplex sends Thorne up high on her, her back and shoulders. Yeah, really good. Nice low uh, grip. Oh! Some little cross face action there. Another one. Brutal cross face shots there by Diamante. Diamante covers. Oh, pulled her, pulled her opponent up off the canvas. Oh! Savannah Thorne trying to cover up, but is getting hammered there. Yeah, the German suplex, the least German suplex definitely slowed her down. And now uh, Diamante definitely capitalizing. Oh, back elbow there. Taz Savannah Thorne might need a, a pillow to sit on. Yeah, she's <laughs> only some prima donna oh. like that. <laughs> only some. Anyways. Diamante rolls Thorne out, makes the cover. No. Oh. Thorne not out of this fight yet. Press up the kick out by Thorne. Showing heart. Diamante, though, ooh, I was gonna say keeping the pressure on, but taking her foot off the gas a little bit here. Yeah, she's trying to get punk her out, punk out, throwing, you know, get, get in her head a little bit, mess with a little bit. You mean, Diamante, that's, that's her thing, man. I, I respect it. But Savannah Thorne throwing in some shots, but got uh, blasted across the midsection. Diamante, oh, just throttling her opponent with both hands. It's Diamante, chip on her shoulder. Aggressive, intense, tough. Those are just a couple of adjectives to describe Diamante. But Savannah oh, Thorne, right once there, again, yeah. looking for the upset. Oh, man. She walked into that shot. Oh, wow. Short arm clothesline there. Diamante with another one. Oh, caught her really high there, maybe across the face. And Savannah Thorne. Shot across the chest, Diamante charging in. The Cazadora into the stunner. Savannah Thorne in serious trouble here. The code oh. red. One, two, three. The winner of this match, Diamante. Taz Diamante wrestling with a purpose here tonight. Yeah, definitely. I, I think you're right, Excal, but that's the word purpose. She came in here locked. Focused, loaded, and uh, you know, Thorne couldn't get out of the way of this, this, this fierce competitor called Diamante. Tremendous angle there on the replay. Thorne, all of her weight comes crashing down on the upper body, and Diamante victorious here tonight. We didn't even really get to touch on you and Sean Spears. How's your back? It's a little bit sore. Oh my God. <laughs> What's up? I want to talk about wrestling with the week. Whatever we have interest in, we're going to chop it up. Did you get the PS5? Ugh. I'm over here all weekend playing PS4 like a heathen. <laughs> Scorpio Sky and myself, James Willems, we got distracted. We're gonna be talking about video games. We're gonna be talking about pop culture. Have you seen the New York Subway Rat Man? What? <laughs> We're gonna be recapping AEW. It's the most exciting part of the show. We're basically gonna be talking about the week. We got a lot to get into, man. It's also what the people wanna see. <laughs> oh my God. Voila. This is progress. Scorpio Sky, James Willems, wrestling with the week. Wrestling with the week. It's gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe now. Woo. It's beautiful, I love it. QT Marshall, the master of the diamond cutter, will be in action next against Fuego Del Sol. Whoa. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Mobile, Alabama. Wow. Wearing 100 
65 pounds, Fuego del Sur. Yeah, what a pop for a guy who hasn't won a match. Taz, you a fan of Brazilian steakhouses? Ah, it's a lot of meat, man. They give you a you make your blood pressure go through the roof. Carving the meat in front of you, it's too much. <laughs> And his opponent, from the Big Apple, weighing 234 pounds, Q.T. Marshall. I'm going to say it before Anthony says it, and I'm actually looking forward to Q.T. Marshall beating the living dog, you know what, out of Fuego Dos Sol. I don't like this Dos Sol guy, and I like Q.T. Bulldog! <laughs> Taz, you can say it, we're on YouTube. Oh, he kicks the living you can't swear on YouTube. What the hell? How many times do I, I have to tell you? You just said it, monetized Jones. <laughs> so, Anthony, I want you on this one, dude. Good man. Good man, Taz. Good man. I don't like Fuego. He's sketchy. Anybody who wears a mask is sketchy. I'll teach you that, Anthony, about pro wrestling. Anybody in wrestling yeah. who wears a mask. Thanks, Taz. I don't like Fuego. Obviously, I'm rooting for my guy, QT Marshall, right now. But to be fair to Fuego, he's a plucky little son of a gun. Well, yeah. you hear the, the crowd responding oh. to oh, yeah. this matchup. There is a long running rivalry between these two men on Sammy Guevara's vlog. I've been following it it's intensively. If that even is a word. Extensively. It's that one, too. Yes. I got you, Taz. Both, Don't worry about it. Both sides. Big oh. shoulder tackle there by Bulldog. Bulldog almost lost his trunks. <laughs> I'll oh. tell you, Q QT's kind of a bully on the Sammy vlog. I, I watched it. He's, he kinda, oh, it's not just on the vlog, Taz. No, I know, but I kind of like it. He is a little bit of a bully. And look at, look at Fuego. Because he throws around his weight, like, and not just physically either. Like, but Fuego using his weight oh, there. Oh, clothesline. Not too much. You can't do it. QT is too experienced. He's much bigger than Fuego. And Fuego's, Fuego's been wanting this match for a long time. And people thought that QT was ducking him. This is a big match. Trust me. This is a statement match, an opportunity for a statement match from QT Marshall. Fuego building up ahead of steam, hits the rough step up. Wow. Into the Tierras. That was surprising. Swing and a miss. Comes through again, another Tierras, perhaps, yes! Wow, <laughs> what a great job by Fuego. Mobile, Alabama's favorite luchador. QT is definitely No, it's, it's Fuego del Sol, not QT. Right, no, I was trying to pull the match, <laughs> but I understand what you're saying. But yes, yeah, so oh, he's, oh, he's going for it! Oh, the tornado, the DDT! Oh, oh but QT deposits oh. Fuego del Sol out on the apron. QT, uh-oh. Whoa, oh, power oh, slam! Yes. Fuego has started like uh, he started on fire, and this is his World Cup final. This is Super Bowl. You're this right. Is everything for him. That's a great point. This is a Super Bowl. This, this is this is it. This is probably the biggest match this young man's ever going to have his entire life. Possibly, quite possibly. Taz, you like how Anthony? nice that I said that, but I really feel that way. You like how Anthony dumbed it down for us? He said World Cup final, and then, then transitioned to Super Bowl. Oh, Super Bowl. Yeah. Oh, you guys, like, you, <laughs> you Americans, a lot of you guys are here. America. You right. love you Americans, don't leave America, so I'm trying to like know a custom right, myself. Well, well, I'm trying to make sure I understand. You're not gonna say something negative about American football, right? That probably would not, not be a football, good idea. It's throwing catch. Oh my god. Throwing catch. I can't believe you're no, going. Go on, go on, go on, QT, go on, <laughs> yank off, yank <laughs> off. I would love to see him yank the mask off of that Fuego do Sol. I don't like that kid. My favorite Brazilian steakhouse chain is, of course, <laughs> Fuego do Sol. <laughs> oh. So uh, we call a callback uh, test. Yeah, that was good. Well Thank done. You. <laughs> Bulldog, QT, doing a little cross-face action there. For me, QT is the perfect modern wrestler because he's a he's a throwback to the old days. Ooh. Right, right. And he can do all the pizzazzy things from... Pizzazzy, is that a word? That's that a word was now. a word. That's a word. Look, he's going all for the tornado. pizzazzy words he's now. Oh. For piz the, the pizzazzy tornado DDT. And I don't know if you noticed oh! that. Oh! That fuego, I, I was going to say, when he hit that soul butt to the midsection, it was almost like a liver shot, but QT... Uh, I'll tell you, Anthony, we've seen a lot of really good counters and cool mm -hmm. counters by QT tonight. Has he been working with you and teaching you this stuff at the uh, at his school at the Nightmare Factory? 100%. 100%. I've been watching, studying QT meticulously. He wrestles all the new guys in the school. And listen, that Does man... Does he bully them too? Does he bully Listen, them he guys? doesn't. He gets the work done. He gets the work done. That man will wrestle 10 times in a night, every single night at the school, and I sit and watch every single match because one day I want to be able to do what that man can do. Okay, well, I'm sure you will do that one day. Probably one day soon, I would assume. 
Oh. That is high praise, Taz. Coming from the Olympic bronze medalist, Anthony Agogo. Uh-oh. Oh, oh. I think Fuego oh. is Dunsky. QT is oh. thinking avalanche oh. diamond cutter here. But oh. Fuego takes Whoa. him down. Huge Rana off the top. QT is stunned. And Fuego with the biggest opportunity of his AEW career. I've been really impressed with Fuego. Really Let's impressed. Take another look at this right here. Great job by Fuego Del Sol. And QT was thinking Avalanche Diamond Cutter. But Fuego turning things around. Blocks the right hand. Fires back into the jaw, QT. You know, this kid, I gotta tell you, Fuego Del Sol, he's, he's you know, just an independent wrestler, undersized guy who's worked hard, and he does get bullied a lot on the Sammy vlog by QT, so it would be a Cinderella story if he was victorious here, but right now, yeah, he's getting Q pounded. Q QT just breaking him down with those big right hands. There's a reason why Cinderella is a fairy tale. Right? A fairy yes, tale, yes, chap. Yes, yes, yes. This is real life. This is AEW. QT. Watch out. Watch out. Oh, oh, great extension by. In the throat. Fuego Del Sol swinging a miss there by QT Marshall. Fuego off the middle rope. Deep hooks and judo. Oh, wow, several near Come falls. Come on, QT. Several near falls for Fuego. Oh. QT oh. thinking diamond cutter once again. Fuego rolls up. QT able to kick his way out of it, though. QT gets caught. Yoshi Tonic, too. No! Oh, nice kick out right there. Good job by QT. Fuego almost had him. You saw, saw Fuego lost the right shoulder of QT Marshall. I think had he hooked it a little deeper, that could have been the end of the night for QT. Don't say we're going to get it. Uh-oh. Oh! Uh -oh. oh. Nice. Wow. Backbreaker, flatliner combo. That's all it takes. Come on, QT. QT Marshall stalling. Well, that's the signs of a veteran. I mean, I, I, wouldn't, I would say he's taking his time, picking his spots. He's, oh, he's going for the diamond cutter, buddy. Here we go. Composure, Taz, poise. Poise, exactly. And he's good. he's called his shot right now. Do you and uh, DDP talk about the diamond cutter when you oh, get on the landline together? Yes, we talk a lot. Watch it. Oh, oh, diamond oh, cutter oh. avoided by oh. Fuego. Fuego had it scouted. Say it ain't so. Fuego del Sol. The Tierra sends Fuego up and over the top oh. of Gom and oh, he Geary. Got him to the face. <laughs> he got him now, buddy. Oh, he got him. Nobody home for QT Marshall. He's been stunned by that front face kick. Look at Fuego. He's going to the top where he's he does good stuff up there. Fuego oh, did it! Oh, he did it! Oh, he hit it! He hit it! But QT Marshall's momentum carried him out of the ring from that Tornado DDT. Every fan in this arena are on their, fe on their feet for this match. Very rarely do you see that happen, and he's finally hit that Tornado DDT. Oh! But because he came off the top, he had so much momentum that QT just was sent to the outside. And that's that veteran match sense and that sixth sense to roll out of the ring. QT, I'm talking on. Knew to get out the ring because he was in a bad, he's in bad shape after that tornado DDT. QT is a savant, a savant of wrestling. I thought you were gonna say savant getting tornado DDT'd. <laughs> oh. Well, Fuego's got to, and he's really got to hustle up to capitalize on this. It's taken him. Oh, he oh. tripped up. That's oh. right. Oh. Oh. Diamond cutter. That I think might be all she wrote, folks. And one oh. more for good measure. QT Marshall, your winner. The winner of this match, QT Marshall. It just takes one little slip up with a veteran. And that's exactly what happened. Fuego Del Sol had the momentum on the side. And you'll see what happens on the top rope if we catch it right here. That and that, and that got caught. And they got caught with another one after that. Yeah, the exclamation point there by QT Marshall. Bullying Fuego Del Sol and picking up the victory here tonight. Fairy tales, they belong in storybooks, not in the life of QT Marshall. Well, check this out Kip Sabian with Penelope Ford in his corner goes up against Carly Bravo. That's next.
This causes a set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Spring Valley, New York, weighing 201 pounds, Carly Bravo. We will get our first look at Carly Bravo as a singles competitor here tonight. He's competed three times previously with Captain Sean Dean as a tag team. But tonight, Bravo will be on his own. We'll see how he has progressed and matured in his young career. And his opponent to be accompanied to the ring by Penelope Ford from Goldston, England, wearing 181 pounds. Super bad. Kip Sabian. Super bad Kip Sabian and the super bad girl Penelope Ford making their way to the ring. Such a lovely couple. Two really nice people. I know mean, a lot of people, that's not a popular thing to say. A lot of people don't agree, but uh, I love Kip, I love Penelope. They're, they're, they're just really good people. We have really fun talks over a spot of tea a lot, and uh, I get along with them. Want to remind everybody that tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT, all new live episode of AEW Dynamite. It will be the fallout from Revolution tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT. Anthony, you share a lot of tea with Kip Sabian? Uh, we haven't actually, you know, I've had a few tea, a cup of tea with Angelico. He makes a great cup of tea. Well, what's the, you put the bag in the water. No, no, Taz, no, 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 there, there's saying, a skill, bro. there's an no, art to I it. I didn't know that. I'm there's sorry. an art to it. I'm not trying to be rude to anybody in my French mm. across the pond. I'm just saying, I think you just put a little water and you dip the tea bag and you're good, you know what I mean? If only, eh, Taz, if I only. I hear you, I hear you, okay, no problem. But no, no, I know Kip Sabian very well. He trained um, with the Knight family in Norwich. Sure. He's uh, well versed in the in old school British wrestling, and he's a cool dude as well. Bitch. I like I like Kip. Oh, a little mocking, Ooh, mocking uh, Carly uh, Bravo yeah, there. Yeah. A little mock city. Of course, uh, Kip Sabian adopting the uh, the colors of Norwich FC. He did. That was a joke. That's for you. Anthony. Yeah, you didn't, gonna, take the, you didn't take the bait. No, because again, again, you know, a lot, a, lot, a lot of Americans don't know football, real football. And I thought maybe you thought Norwich did play in in, in purple, but Wait, they don't. Why do you keep, no, saying, actually, why do you keep saying real football? Because you play with your feet. Football, but football. Do you you kick the football. The guy who owns this company owns an NFL football <laughs> yeah, team. He, bring, he you know, brings up an excellent an point, Anthony. And he also team. is the chief executive I of know, a football I'm, team. I'm Fulham. Football, I know. real so football. He's got it bolt covered. He, he owns an American football team. Yes, and, and Fulham. An English football team. Right, yes. Nice teller take over there by uh, Carly Bravo. Yes, yes, yes. I, I noticed you didn't call it a throw and catch club when, uh, yeah. when you were talking about Tony. Because yeah, I like me and Tony go way back. I like oh, Tony. Sorry, okay. he, know, he, he, knows, he knows his onions, Tony does. Yes. Carly Bravo, nice Bravo escapes out and gives the salute right back to Kip Sabian. Come on, Kip, don't take it. Kip, don't take it. Taz, you know the colors of Norwich? Uh, I actually don't, I'll be honest. Oh, man. Yellow and green. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my It's, it's a hideous toss. combination. Drop kick there. Oh, that was, a, that's, that was not a hideous drop kick. That was a really good drop kick right Carly there. Carly Bravo right on the money with that one. I like Carly. You know, he's uh, he's well-traveled. He he served in the, in the Marines, was it? Marines, in the Marines. I believe, no, yes. he's, he's a tough guy. He's Oh. That was a nice forearm shot right there. And Carly Bravo elevates, but... Kip Sabian picks out the ankle, drops Bravo down face first. Shotgun drop kick knocks Bravo out of the ring. Norwich actually same colors as the uh, Australian national team, Taz. Oh, interesting, interesting. You've got to wake see, up. Yeah. See, Anthony, we do know something okay. about it. You say we're you, you, but I said already today, you're, you're a cultured man, Excalibur. Oh, that might have been last Saturday. I don't know. I can't keep track. Yeah. <laughs> XP the colors of American sports team. I'll nail every one of them. College, pro, whatever you want to do. But uh, anyways. You know, that's the thing. What about the Jacksonville I'm, University I'm, Dolphins? I, I am green and white. I am, uh, and I'm right. Um, just being honest. I know you are. Yeah. So They recruited uh, my kid back in the day, but I digress. Uh, so hey, but then you recruited story. him to Team Taz. Well, I so. actually did. Somebody else. Team you, Taz you knew did. somebody in the office. But, yeah. <laughs> but and now he wears the orange and black of he Team does, Taz. He does sometimes. But, uh, yeah. Interesting way that Kip starts saving stomps his opponents in the corner. He kind of like... Elon gates his leg and, and, and drifts it up. Ooh! It's, it's different ways, to your point, to stop 
your opponent. You know, and people just think it's a stop. It's not. There's several different ways, and I agree. He brings his leg a little higher. It's more of a deliberate, you know, mm. type of stop. And I think it's, I'm a fan of anything he does in the ring, Kip Sabin. I, I, even before I came into AEW, I was familiar with his work. He's a tremendous competitor. Very correct in what he yeah, does, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Again, it's yeah, that, that, that stalling stop there yeah. right between the shoulder blades of Carly Bravo. Like tons of British wrestlers in the past and current, you know, and Anthony, I'm sure you'll be right there with them. You know, Ooh. just. Oh, just, look at this. Carly Bravo Whoa. taking advantage. Such a great history, as we all know, of, of the great you know, British pro wrestlers. So the catch style or whatever you want, any styles of, of, that so many British wrestlers bring. And Kip is just so talented. And he's a handsome devil. He's got a beautiful blushing. I mean, look at this. I mean, it's a, who's got a better than Kip? Very true. Very true. Kip Sabian sending Carly Bravo head first into that top turnbuckle pad. I like that Excalibur, the stalling stomp. I like you've named that very, really, really well, the stalling stomp. Taz, it's like I know what I'm doing. Here. Oh! oh, oh, oh. Straight in the mush. Hi, Gaman Geary. And the PK. He's looking at I think it's a field goal. Well, I'm not allowed to speak on American football. Anthony's going to hit me with a right hook. It's actually a rugby reference if you want to get. Right, listen, you know what? I've had enough of you. Okay? Next caliber, you're starting to really piss me off. <laughs> I've been nice it, to you. It is a day that ends in a Y, yeah, so, so it makes sense. I mean, like, enough, really. Everybody kissing your ass. I'm sick of it. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, nice, cap nice what jab. Captain Sean yeah. Dean urging on Carly Bravo. Laid in oh. some big right hands. Drop Kip Sabian. Good shot. Sabian up to his Don't feet in the back. corner. There you go. Okay. I was going to say, he had his back turned a little too long. And there, the, the ankle of, of Sabian gets picked out by Bravo. Goes for a leg drop now, and he, he lands it across the back. But a little too close to the yeah. ropes here. And that's his inexperience right there. Yeah, Carly Bravo been le wrestling for less than a year. Way less than a year, maybe four months, five months, tops. And, and, and it showed because you know, someone, yeah, yeah. someone wise would have dragged him to the middle of it and then got the pin then. Now look at perhaps her uh, standing slice bread. Sabian anticipated, catches the boom! Oh, oh, what a shot. Pendulum knee strike, the big right hand. And Sabian has Bravo up on the shoulder, the gut buster. Yeah, I think I think Kip is done playing around here yeah, with Polly yeah. Bravo. Kicking it into high gear. You could tell. Oh! That's it. Dropped him down. One, two, three. The winner of this match, Kip Sabian. A seasoned veteran maneuver. He noticed that Carly Bravo, one of his arms were about to be under, break the plane under the bottom rope. He put his foot and blocked it from getting under the rope. I mean, just a subtle little thing that wrestlers would notice. So good. A subtle but important move there at the very end by Kip Sabian. As he, Whoa, that corkscrew, planted Bravo and picked up the victory here tonight on AEW Dark. The always scary, the always intimidating. Abaddon will go one on one with Catalina Perez next here on AEW Dark. This contest is set for one ball with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from the Black Hills, Abaddon! Abaddon making her return oh. here tonight to AEW Dark. Oh, see that splat? Just that splat. I did see it, and the women's division here in all elite wrestling has been busted wide open. Who will step up? We could find out here tonight. Well, again, uh, we've talked about Abaddon a lot over, the, over her time here in AW, and you see Perez. And her opponent from Long Island, New York, Catalina Perez. Perez is uh, was a little shooken. Can't blame her for seeing you know, somebody like Abaddon. It's tough to prepare for Ab you know, Abaddon. Yeah, Abaddon is uh, I mean, not only unorthodox in appearance, but you know, unorthodox in technique as well. Waist lock there. Oh, Catalina Perez hammering Abaddon. 
A couple shots across the back, drop toe hold. Avenon put on the break. You see, Avenon put that that lead foot out in front of her to stop the the momentum on the drop toe hold. Yeah, it was smart. It was good good footwork right there to stop the uh, the takedown attempt, the, the drop toe hold takedown attempt. Oh! oh. <laughs> Avenon driving the knees into the chest of Catalina Perez. Perez is definitely hurting after that, man. She uh, oof. Perez. Sent into the ropes. And Abaddon just absorbing those shots. Ooh, to the midsection there by Perez, doubling over Abaddon. Oh, man, and that is intimidating. Abaddon, since she's in the waist, oh, release German suplex. Well, you, you saw Perez tried to cover up right away. She grabbed her own head. Because she knew she was airborne, she was airborne and grabbed the head, I should say, and knew that she was about to get dumped on it. And now getting her head bounced off the canvas is Catalina Perez, who, I mean, escapes to the relative safety of the of the floor. Abana, oh man, stalking, stalking, yeah. Her opponent, and oh, ran right through Perez. Did Abaddon? Heavy duty shot. You <laughs> see even. Even the, even the crowd backing off of Avedon. Catalina Perez being returned to the ring. And Avedon, like I said, you know, it's just like, it, if, if you, you know, it's all about preparation when you compete against somebody, right? So, no matter if it's a tag team match or a singles match, and it's like, I don't know, I mean, how you, you know, I've never, me personally, never wrestled someone that's so outlandish as a Avedon. I don't really know how you prepare for it for her. Lowe's line there by Perez takes Abaddon down. And I mean, Tez, you know, Abaddon is, uh, is even intimidated the AEW Women's World Champion, Hikaru Shida. Oh, yeah. No, you're right. Big elbow strikes there. Abaddon brings Perez up and splats her down. Perez could be out. She could be out right now. Abaddon has Catalina Perez, I think, right where she wants her. Yep. Hooked up on the shoulders and taking her down to Cemetery Drive. Forget it. Forget it. Abaddon covers two and three. The winner of this match. Abaddon. An impressive, impressive performance for... Uh, uh, how, how do you even describe Abaddon, Ted? Ah, it's tough to describe her. She's unorthodox. That's one word. She's, you know, obviously, she's scary. She's yeah. obviously, you know, deranged. She's obviously violent. She's obviously vicious. I mean, I can go on all night. And well, she, I keep going. She is obviously your winner. Here tonight on AEW. Oh, Jesus. Whoa, whoa, watch that. Well, main event tag team action coming up right now. Santana and Ortiz, they go head up against Sonny Kiss and Joey Janela. This is a tag team contest for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from New York, New York, at a combined weight of 425 pounds, Santana and Ortiz. That's what a great main event we have for everyone here tonight on AEW Dark. Yeah, no, 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 can't wait. Anytime uh, Santana and Ortiz get after it and do their thing, man. I'm a big fan of these two guys personally and professionally. So yes, this is gonna be a, a, a dynamic main event. And we do that every week on Dolph, let's be honest. Yeah. You know? Great set of matches. And then next week, of course, AEW Dark Elevation will be starting. Can't wait for that. Yeah. And their opponents at a combined weight of 391 pounds, the Concrete Rose, Sunny Kiss. That ass and is so spicy, it's hot, it's, it's hotter than the hottest pepper in the world. Joey, Janella. 
I'll tell you, Excalibur, your voice, the way you change your voice is really impressive. You sound like Joey Janela. It's really impressive that we did that. J Joey Janela just ran over here, ripped my headset off. And, Wait uh, a minute, did he? <laughs> uh, talked all over J Justin Roberts about Carolina Reaper peppers or something. I don't know. Yes. I couldn't hear it. I didn't Justin, have my headset on. Justin loves that. Well, how'd you have your headset on? The guy ripped it off. Yeah. Well, either that or I'm a great, uh, right, great vocal impressionist like Michael Winslow from the Police Academy movies, Taz. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, there we go. Santana Ortiz not wasting any time. Putting the boots to Janela and Sonny. There isn't anything better <laughs> than watching two dudes from New York beat the living daylights out of two guys from Jersey. I think it's great. Well, as a as a native New Yorker, Taz, of course you would say that. Well, I'm just, I'm, I'm not, you know, I don't pick sides. I'm just giving an opinion. That's what I get paid for. You remember that song? I don't know what it it's a oh, very old school. I, I know you're old. I didn't know you were that old. But I do remember that song from the like, late 70s, I think, dude. I'm a native New Yorker. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. <laughs> Santana is just. Yeah, there's nothing funny about what's happening to Joey and Sonny it's here. It's kind of funny, but I hear you. <laughs> well, but not Joey, if you're Joey or Sonny. Right, but Joey, Joey obviously has a lot of fight in him. He'll, he'll always keep fighting back, as will Sonny Kiss. Oh. Man, Joey sent over the barricade to the unforgiving concrete on the outside. Maybe he didn't get thrown into the heater. That would have been awesome. Joey would have probably thought it was cool. Let me put my hair in the heater. That's great, Joey. Again, the aliens from Mars attacks. Your one little, impression. I have one impression, bro. It's it. Sonny Kiss sent into the ropes by Ortiz. Splits the legs. Step Whoa. up into the Rana. And the drop salt. Great job by Sonny. Sonny oh, Kiss. So he's got rocked there. Yeah, with an uphill battle ahead of him. The rapid uh -oh. kiss missile. Santan or excuse me, Ortiz with the swing and the miss. Sonny. Ooh. Right across the head. Yeah, great roundhouse kick. Oh! Drop Santana there. Sonny Kiss doing a good job fighting what is essentially a handicap match right now. Yeah, because uh, Janela still not on the apron. Maybe he did fall into the heater. One could hope, but uh, let's see him. Oh! oh, big roundhouse kick there by Santana. Uh oh, Sonny's in trouble. Vertical suplex. Sonny's in trouble. Into just a, a diving crossbody. One, two, no. Good toughness, good heart. No one to tag. Sonny realizes there's a problem. Yeah, it's, it's all on Sonny right now. Oh! Yeah, I, I'm, I don't even see. Where Janelle, he's around ringside. He think he's still down, injured. Snap, suplex there. And uh, another snap suplex. Santana looking for the three amigos. Oh, in those hips right there to swing around and get some momentum. Let's see. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wow. The assistant suplex. suplex. Right there. And there we Joey, see yeah. Joey. He was uh, in the front. Oh, Almost the end of the match right there. Sonny kicks out of that pinfall attempt by Ortiz. Second one. Yeah, Joey is. Sonny's like in the. He's in where the audience would sit. Yeah, the, the, how do you make it over there? Those metal barricades. Maybe Santana, when we weren't paying attention, tossed him uh, even further. Well, you might have. You probably didn't pay attention. I always pay attention. I know you do, Tess. I didn't see this, but that's okay. Johnny on the spot, Jones. <laughs> All right, well done. Look at this. Sonny is just getting stretched apart. Look. Oh man. <laughs> he the man. Where's Tiger Style? I haven't seen him do Tiger Style in a long time. You know Tiger Style. I right? know Tiger Style. And just an abdominal stretch. Oh, oh, look at that! Foot. Yeah, see that the knuckles inside the intercostals, the rib cage area, and tearing at the nose of Sunny Kiss. Big hip toss and a drop kick to the back. Santana and Ortiz are looking great here. Hooks the far leg. I mean, it's basically a, a two-on-one match right now. I mean, obviously, Sonny's the one. Ooh. Oh, gosh. Shot to the midsection. Santana with a tight grip. And now, again, ripping at the nose of Sonny Kiss. That is not a move that will win you matches, but it's a move that will throw your opponent off their game. Santana and Ortiz, two of the more vicious, meaner competitors in all of professional wrestling. I'm just so happy they're part of AEW. I envy Chris Jericho that these two men are in the inner circle. They are awesome, always. Ortiz brings Sonny up. The 
Backdrop here, cover one, two. How about Sonny Kiss? I mean, tip your cap because the toughness shown, not giving up, resiliency keeps kicking out, the kicking out, it's just very impressive. Sonny has endured a lot of punishment here, Taz. And, uh, you know, the, Santana and Ortiz, as we found out in that, that parking lot fight last year, are two tough, heavy hitters. Oh, yeah. And so nobody, nobody there Nobody's for Sonny there. to tag out to. Where the hell is Joey? He's still, he's over there. Joey, again, he's a. Look at him. Yeah, he's over there on the, that white steel railing. He's probably hung over. And, He's hung over the white steel railing. As uh, Sonny covers here, hooks both legs. That's what I meant. <laughs> yeah, of course. Just a two count there. Sonny Kiss, this handicap match has been, uh, has been a, a tough road to hoe. As Ortiz, great awareness there. It's tough to deal with Santana Ortiz in a regular tag team match. Nevertheless, you know, nevertheless like this. And, uh, Essentially a handicap match. Sonny. Joey, I, yeah, I, maybe he's just got, I don't know if he's got a, an injury or something and he, and he just can't recover. Oh, up kicks there by Sonny Kiss, swing and a miss. Sonny, oh! Sonny, I think, hooked Santana in a, in yeah. a flatliner. Yeah, was able to, to counter whatever Santana was gonna do. Sonny Kiss desperately needs to make the tag. Santana making the crawl. And now Joey Janela back up on the apron. Wow, that's kind of a little late to the dance. We showed up at least. Janela, big right hands to Ortiz, one to Santana. Takes Ortiz off his feet, ducks the contact, and a clothesline. Joey Janela coming in on his white horse. Janela. Just a big running shoulder tackle. Nice skip up, almost. Nice skip up again. <laughs> He's fired up. It doesn't matter how nice the kip ups look. <laughs> they weren't nice. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but you know what? He might have some sort of injury. That's it. Oh! Double boots to the midsection. Double Irish whip. Janela ducks. Santana, Whoa. low bridge there. And Ortiz taking over the top rope. Janela sending Santana into the barricade. Dive. Oh my Whoa. God! Whoa! Janela just drove Ortiz's head right into the stage. That was a nasty landing for Ortiz, but it could be just what Janela needed. One, two. Oh, the rope. Good job. Good match sense by Ortiz. That's a veteran move. Joey's frustrated. I'll tell you what, Janela was gone for a chunk of this match, injured or something, but at least making up for it. And now he tags in. Sonny Kiss was not 100%. I'm a little surprised he tagged in Sonny Kiss. Sonny's not 100% yeah, at not, all. Sonny not moving well as they both send Ortiz into the ropes. Death Valley driver, no. Sonny Kiss hits the rope, the split, reverse DDT. Sonny. Covers, hooks the far leg, Santana there to break it up in time. Good teamwork, good teamwork by Santana and Ortiz there. Santana making a save. Joey Janela charging into the corner. Man, did he get rocked. But so did Santana there by the elbow strike from Sonny Kiss. Ortiz elevating his partner out of harm's way. Santana rolling off the back wow, into the Cazadora, the assist. Pop Sonny over the top. Oh, the power Jeez. bomb. Brain buster combo. He's done. One, two, no. Great save by Janela. Janela at the last possible moment making the save. Wild swing and a miss by Santana. The boot across the jaw by Janela Ortiz. Oh, the brain buster. Right on the top of Janela's head. Sonny. Splits out into the jawbreaker. Almost like a stunner there. Yeah, Ortiz is not, not in a good way right now. <clears throat> Maybe going for it again. Ortiz kicking his feet, fighting out of it. Santana lifts up Sonny and uses, uh, uses Sonny's momentum. Death Valley driver, neckbreaker combo. Santana Ortiz pick up the victory. The winners of this match, Sonny.
Quintana and Ortiz. Definitely wasn't easy, and it was definitely hard as heck on, on, on Sonny Kiss, because the chunk of the match, Sonny Kiss was in a two-on-one situation. Janela was able to make it through the rain and get out here. But God, what a crazy turn of events in this match. Yeah, Taz, the, the toughness, the resilience of Sonny Kiss was on display, but you know, I mean, it was so much punishment was inflicted on Sonny Kiss. Yeah. Santana and Ortiz were ev eventually able to capitalize it and pick up the victory here tonight in our main event. Awesome main event. Well, thank you everyone for joining us here tonight on AEW Dark. Tomorrow night, 8, 7 central on TNT. It will be AEW Dynamite. We have a great night of action in store for you. So thank you once again for joining us. Good night, everybody.